Welcome to an exciting whirlwind adventure through a diverse Singapore. We will be taking in some of Singapore's most breathtaking panoramic views from Faber Point. Then we will go to the bustling streets of Chinatown and find a different religious, cultural and architectural experience in this oasis within Singapore's corporate skyscrapers. So get ready to immerse yourself in the rich history, diverse culture and breathtaking architecture that define Singapore's dynamic landscape. Let's explore. Hello and welcome back to the vlog and today you catch us on a bus as we make our way towards Faber Peak. Mount Faber is the second largest national park in Singapore and there are three main ways to get up it. Uh, the first is by road, the second is by a cable car and the third which is the route I'm going to take which is to hike up the steps. So I've just got off the bus and I'm trying to make my way to Mount Faber Lookout Point which is supposed to have some incredible views over Singapore. Let's see if we get there. There's an interesting cable car system here as well. Presumably that's also going up to Mount Faber. And I'm starting my hike from Harbour Front, which is where the bus has dropped me off. now found the path to get up to Mount Faber lookout point and are uh, proceeding. Uh, heavily um, amounts of vegetation in this area and a number of steps to get up to the top. Mount Faber is part of the Seven Ridges and it's very near to the Teluk Blangar Secondary Rainforest and was originally known as the Teluk Blangar Hill. So the name of the hill was changed in 1845 by the Singapore government and that was due to the recognition that they wanted to give to Captain Charles Faber from the Madras engineers who built the road that went up to the summit allowing a surveillance station and flagstaff to be erected and for that to be able to guide the ships into the port. That was an absolute necessity as Stamford Raffles sought to establish Singapore as a major trading post. No, these aren't sound effects that have been added in post, but actually the sounds that were around Mount Faber as I walked up the hill. Uh, Mount Faber being renowned for its many different and varied varieties of birds. So what is now a tranquil park was back in the day a defence fort. It had a gun placement it looked out, it's in an ideal vantage point, looking out over the bay to fire on enemy ships should they occur. That was dismantled in 1885. I ascended the hill, the cable car, which was the first cable car in Singapore, 
was very, very visible all the way up the hill. Uh, this cable car was established in 1974 and was the first attraction that was put onto the hill itself. So I've made it up to the top of Faber's Point and to where the cable car docks and the views as you will see are absolutely incredible really good views all over Singapore uh, both into the city and down to sea really enjoyable And now the journey to Faber Point itself. Having got to the peak and the peak park, I now need to get to the point. It turns out that this wasn't the route to the point as I first thought, but led up to a little platform where you could see some bells and there were some very nice bells that were also attached to the fence. Uh, by visitors. Faber Point is the highest point on Mount Faber and its superb views over the Singapore coast and city are one of the main reasons that people go there. I still plan to get to Faber Point but I first of all decided to take in some of the scenery, the seascapes, the views of the city from this lovely area itself. Do you know what? I love this toilet with its open window with a superb view. On my list of things to encounter at Faber Point, this was not one of them. It wasn't that hard to find Faber Point. I've made it up here and now passing through the granite blocks that frame the entrance with the glass inlays. And the views in every direction are absolutely stunning. On the ground are glass arrows showing the directions of various landmarks, oceans and seas. one points to Little India, which is where I was yesterday. And over there is the cable car station that the uh, majority of the visitors probably came in on. The official mascot of Singapore is the Merlion and the Merlion reflects the original formation of Singapore's fishing village and then its original name which was Singapore or Lion City and you can see them scattered around the city and also on tourist paraphernalia. Now starting my descent and the aim is to get to Chinatown. Well, 
right, so now I'm trying to clock my descent from Faber Point, Faber Peak, and I'm going via Henderson Waves. Sorry, Henderson Waves. Not quite sure what's at Henderson Waves, but uh, all the signs seem to lead there, and I can track a route from Henderson Waves to Chinatown. So let's see where we go. So slight change of plan. I've just found a staircase that goes to Telek Blanger Rise and it looks as if it'll probably cut out five minutes from the journey. So my plan is to go down there. Right, so I've made it down to a residential street and I'm heading in the ref direction that Google Maps shows that I should be pointing in. Then hit a problem as I tried to get a bus over to Little China. The issue was that I couldn't connect to my cellular network and therefore couldn't use the online Google Maps and the online Google Maps was the only way that I could actually get the bus timetable or even understand which bus I needed to take in order to get to Little China. So I had to improvise. I did have a offline map and I used that to make my way and then got a bus when I saw one going in the general direction I wanted. The improvisation paid off and I'm pleased to say that I arrived in Little China. This was a stark contrast to what I had been experiencing on Mount Faber and is very different from the other parts of Singapore, a bit like Little India, but the streets here bustle with both locals and tourists. You can smell authentic Chinese cooking and food and you can experience both tourist shops and also the local shops. So a really different environment. So I just wandered streets, taking in the various sights, sounds and smells as I went along and actually having a really good time, thoroughly enjoyed myself. There was a wide variety of different shops and a wide variety of different restaurants which was absolutely superb. You felt actually as if you were in a bit of an oasis because you kept on getting a glimpse of these very tall contemporary skyscrapers and yet here you were in a completely different world. Chinatown has a number of significant religiously important buildings. Some are Chinese, but there are also Buddhist and Hindu temples, like the one we're about to visit, as well. So the Siri Miraman Temple is a Hindu temple, and it's one of the oldest shrines in Singapore. And as you will see as you look around it with me, it's a really marvellous site. It's very similar to the Hindu temples that we saw when we visited Little India. has the same very unique styling with the statues and the bright colours.
The temple is named after the major deity who is worshipped in the main hall. But around the hall there are other shrines where other deities are also worshipped. The temple is a national monument and has been since 1973. It has gone through extensive renovation and changes over the years. The original brick structure is believed to date back to 1849, but there was major work, including the superb sculptures that make up the entrance piece, that went into 1925 and the 1960s. This is one of two religious establishments that I wanted to see in Chinatown. The other one is a Buddhist temple, which we will come to shortly, with a very interesting name, the Buddha Tooth Relic Temple. As well as a temple, this site also houses a museum. Now the name comes from a tooth that was found in a stupa that had collapsed and was brought to this temple. The tooth measured about three inches, which is far too long for a human tooth, and it is believed or claimed that it's a relic of Buddha and hence the name of the temple, the Buddha Tooth Relic Temple. I entered the temple through some very ornate doors flanked on either side by some quite fierce looking sculptures and then found myself in a small courtyard with a receptacle in front of me for incense. Behind that was a set of halls. Tourists and people that were coming to pray and to worship mingled almost indistinguishably and as a tourist we were allowed to go into both of the halls. There's the first hall and there's another hall behind it, but we could only film in the first hall. The temple is four stories high and you can actually go and see the famed tooth relic on the fourth floor as it's open to the public, but I didn't do that.
from the first hall back to the second hall and I followed um, not intended to film tourists can go in and observe the ceremony and that's what I did Behind the second hall there is this entrance and exit which again it was very ornate and very much in the gold and red theme that we saw in the previous hall. the corner from the Buddha Tooth Relic Temple Museum is the Chinatown Street Market which has a wide range of stalls and also some very nice murals on the wall. to leave Chinatown and make my way slowly back to the hotel. We were leaving tomorrow morning so I didn't actually want to be late and I came across this mosque, the Jamia Mosque. Unfortunately as the sign says we weren't allowed to go in as a visitor. This sculpture is by Lim Leon and it's looking at the role that coolies played in the development of Singapore in the 19th century. And we have another of his sculptures here, again featuring a coolie pulling a rickshaw, and it's called Heading Home, and it explores the difference between rich and poor in the development of Singapore. Chinatown and entered back into the commercial centre of Singapore with its contemporary buildings.
follow the channel for any period of time will know that the one thing I love is a bit of art. And this is a set of sculptures in the living world and it's by Ju Ming. These contemporary buildings are fantastic structures of steel, sometimes concrete and glass, but someone's got to clean them and I just get sweaty palms looking at these guys. I'm now making my way back towards the hotel and I'm in the same area that I was when I did my Marina Bay tour and one of the things that I spotted on that was an Anderson Bridge which looked quite interesting so I decided that this time I'd route myself back that way. And just down from the Anderson Bridge on the banks of the Singapore River are a number of bronze sculptures depicting aspects of life at various points in time during the development of Singapore. They provide a unique perspective on the history of Singapore, which I found fascinating. In front of the Asian Civilization Museum are these bulls. Sort of reminds me of a 1960s show, The Prisoner. Sculpture depicts 50 years of Singapore independence. In front of the Victoria Memorial Hall is this superb sculpture of Sir Stamford Raffles. Originally, this was located on the Padan, which is a sports playing field with a number of historic buildings a short way from here. blocks from our hotel and I'll whip back, pick up Joanne and we'll go out for the evening. my walk for today. I did everything that I wanted to do and a little bit more and I've just now made it back to the hotel. I'm ready to meet up with Joanne to grab some evening food. And it's now the next day. We had a good meal last night and uh, we're now getting up early to get our pickup car which arrived promptly to take us to the airport. The city looks very different at this time of the day, very atmospheric, love the lights and it's a relatively short drive to get to the airport. Our flight is on Singapore Airlines which was the same carrier that we came in on and check-in was really super easy. It will be a shorter flight back from Singapore as we don't have the Hong Kong lake. Now it's time to bring this vlog and the vlog series for our Asian cruise including our stays in Hong Kong and Singapore to a close. We have both thoroughly enjoyed our time here. It's been a brilliant experience and one that we would both recommend wholeheartedly. And we welcome you to our next vlog series which will be when we fly out to Buenos Aires and then cruise around Antarctica. 
it will be a fantastic experience or at least we hope so so please join us